Before we can begin on our quest, I want to extend my sincere gratitude to Inflection Games for sponsoring this video. Whether you're ready to set off on your own journey or join up to 6 players in co-op play on PC, you can find the game on Steam or Epic for $30. Link is in the description below. Now, let's dive in. Welcome to Nightingale, where I spend the next 100 days traveling through its many realms to unearth the secrets of the lost city. Join me on this epic odyssey as you confront the relentless hordes of the Bound, face off against formidable creatures, and dare to risk everything in pursuit of the ultimate path. Fellow Realm Walkers, my journey begins here in the Ambiance Forest Realm. With Park's departure, I was tasked with setting up a home base to acquaint myself with the realm and its many wonders. As I prepared to tackle the tasks ahead, I was momentarily halted by the sight of a wolf in the distance. Knowing that this confrontation was inevitable, I braced myself to face it head on. However, my will to survive was tested further when two more wolves joined the fray. Despite the odds, I remained determined to control the situation and prevent the pack from overwhelming me. Through my determination and skill, I gradually gained the upper hand and one by one the wolves succumbed to defeat. Afterward, I shifted my focus to establishing my base. My first priority was acquiring the estate Kern, where I was visited once more by Puck, who bestowed upon me bountiful gifts to aid me on my journey. Next, I set out constructing my wooden shack and gathered the necessary resources for its completion. Finally, I obtained several crafting stations, including a tanning station, a workbench, storage baskets, a campfire, and a bed. With these essentials in place, I felt prepared to embark on the adventures that awaited me. The day dawned with a sense of optimism as I delved into the intricacies of crafting, refining resources into items suitable for fashioning improved tools and weapons. Among my achievements were obtaining a simple wood axe, a simple mining pick, and a sling bow. With my preparations complete, I set my sights on one of the points of interest marked on the map. Upon reaching the designated marker, I was greeted by a magnificent structure, the antiquarian site of power. Here, amidst the splendor of ancient ruins, I encountered a majestic magical beast. Thankfully, its demeanor proved to be rather placid, sparing me from concern. Turning my attention to the survivors in the vicinity, I engaged in conversation with Wilhelmina Sass, who imparted valuable knowledge about recruiting fellow survivors to aid me on my quest. Armed with this information, I swiftly came to the aid of a nearby survivor who was embroiled in a struggle against a pack of wolves. Having resolved the immediate threat, I assisted the survivor in constructing essential items, including beds and a campfire. In return for my assistance, I was generously rewarded with a heap of essence. The survivor, grateful for my aid, readily accepted my invitation to join me on the journey to Nightingale. Not to be overlooked was the nearby trader, whose introduction opened the door to a world of trading. Utilizing the essence I collected, I engaged in transactions to acquire items offered by the trader. On day 3, I was faced with an unprecedented challenge. While I was busy getting a few things in order, the weather changed for the worse, and somehow, being indoors didn't really help. Nevertheless, we had to figure something out. Both Nanny and I went out to farm some stone as fast as we could to patch up the ceiling with stone structures. Unfortunately, things didn't work out as planned, though it remained manageable. After the storm had subsided, I resumed the task at hand. I crafted the simple shirt, the head wrap, and the simple breeches. Oh, and if you were wondering where I got the backpack from, well, I took it off of Nanny. With my supply of hide running low, Nanny and I set off in search of an animal that could provide us with the hide we needed. Not too far from base, we encountered a team of hogs, ripe for the edge of my blade. Bright and early the next morning, I prepared a few items, healing salves, some food, and the last pieces of armor in anticipation of the challenge that lay ahead. I was going to take on the Antiquarian Sight of Power. Alrighty, Nanny, are you ready? You need to do this. Let's go ahead and, uh, no, not punch, eat. We should be able to get through this. Brilliant. This is where the fun begins, I suppose. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Come on. Oh, man. That's not gonna help. There we go. Son! 
What is doing that? Oh, this guy. Hopefully I don't hit, he, uh, hit uh, Nanny in the process, yeah? You're gonna be fighting a whole lot of these guys, I suppose. Ooh! I don't know what it is. Let's take it. Whoa. We got more of these uh, guys to deal with. Can we snipe them from here, maybe? No, no, no. What the freak happened there, man? That's not what I wanted. Darn it! Come on! There we go! Night to night, baby! What? What's going on here? Oh, what's up? Oh, fabled automaton! Wait, wait, I'm testing out. Oh my freaking self. Holy smokes. Woo-wee. Numbers got me there, son. Wait, wait. <laughs> there we go. This might be it. Yeah. Sayonara. Here we go. Release. The hope echo brilliant play this card to seek a realm of middling danger well after defeating the first site of power i was rewarded with additional crafting stations to build these items i set out to create more living space at the base both nanny and i added a few stone structures to complete the build once the base extension was complete i shifted my focus to preparing the items required to work on the new stations then I proceeded to craft two simple smelters, the simple saw table, and the mortar station, just to name a few. Furthermore, we had to venture out to gather some ore and find materials to make glass, all in an effort to craft the most important station, the enchanter's focus. In order to begin crafting cards for the portal, I required ink, and to produce ink, I needed a few essential resources. So, we journeyed into the forest depths in search of mushrooms and berries. However, these resources were scarce amidst the dense foliage. Yet, the true threat lay in the predators lurking within. Nonetheless, I was well prepared to face any challenge that dared to test the might of the camster. Not long after discovering one of the many points of interest in this realm and finding some hidden loot, I noticed an abundance of mushrooms and berries surrounding a nearby statue. Upon returning to base, I prepared some ink in the mortar station and acquired paper from logs at the saw table. With the ink and paper ready, I crafted the major antiquarian card and decided to craft the forest card as well, opting for simplicity. For the remainder of the day, I explored a few more intriguing locations while remaining vigilant for any signs of hidden treasure. Day 7 began with the daunting task of finding the Fey Portal. With no clue of its location, I searched tirelessly across the map. During the journey, we were ambushed by a horde of the Bound. Standing our ground, Nanny and I vanquished the threat, earning a few spoils in the process. Yet, the portal remained frustratingly out of reach. With a hailstorm in full force, Nanny and I sought refuge at a nearby campsite as we recounted our steps and pondered our next move in our quest to find the portal. Not having the faintest idea of what I needed to do in order to find the portal, I considered an alternate path. It seemed as though there were these sites of power scattered throughout my realm which could hold the key to opening a portal. However, Lacking the required levels to enter these sites of power, I concluded that improving my base was the best option available. Doing something rather than nothing, as I tried to figure out a way out of this predicament. I then spent the rest of the day with Nanny, gathering the materials required to fill in the additions to my base and finalize the blueprint layout that I had set. On day 9, after much perseverance, I finally located the Fey Portal. Following that, I used the realm card machine to insert the cards I had on hand, the forest card and the antiquarian card. This action opened a portal to another realm, but it also summoned in 
a few of the bound, which I had to deal with before diving into the portal. Here, at the antiquarian forest, my objective was to contact a specific gentleman named Mr. Aurelio Ortega. Upon speaking with Aurelio, I was given a mission, an initiation process to join the Realm Walkerhood. To join this force, I had three tasks to fulfill. The first task was to collect essence from a nearby ruin. Thankfully, this task wasn't as difficult as I had thought. Taking down the bound proved to be a simple feat for both Nanny and me. We also managed to gather a whole stack of essence after clearing the room of the creatures of the night. For the second quest, I had to acquire an artifact, which required me to tackle the Fate Tower. Not wanting to take any chances, I decided to upgrade my gear. To do that, I visited the Essence Trader in this realm to purchase the simple spinning wheel and a few of the other items in stock. Returning to my respite realm, I proceeded to prepare the new crafting stations I had acquired previously, intending to upgrade my gear. I then ventured out to gather all the resources needed to craft these stations. Additionally, there was a need for essence, prompting me to return to the Antiquarium Forest Realm to search for various points of interest. During our time there, we encountered the Bound, which needed to be taken care of, and there were puzzles that needed to be solved to gain access to the required essence. Finally, back at space with my crafting stations completed, I proceeded to upgrade my simple wood axe and explore a few of the infusions. On day 11, I returned to the Fate Tower in the Antiquarium Realm, feeling more prepared to take on its challenges. However, this Fate Tower had a few tricks up its sleeve. In order to reach the top, I had to navigate through a diabolical maze, filled with all types of nasty traps. Traps that could explode or engulf you in poisonous gases. With sheer determination, I managed to escape the maze and moved on to my next task. At the top of the Fey Tower, we faced the second task, to take out a horde of the Bound. Fortunately, I had the foresight to upgrade my weapon, which made quick work of the Bound. This granted me access to the synchronous Lotus and a visit from Puck, who rewarded me with a blueprint for a crude portal. Next, I went to Aurelio to share the news. At his cab, I was rewarded with a few interesting blueprints, as well as the third task, to continue exploring as a realm walker and find a person of interest in the desert Herbarium realm, Miss Nelly Bly. Back at my home realm, I proceeded to prepare for a crude portal by farming the necessary resources and refining them at the workstations, eventually crafting the portal. Next, I journeyed back to the Antiquarium Forest, where I spotted another survivor in need of assistance and a potential recruit for my guild. However, to reach that point, I had to help this person build an entire base, which required a significant amount of materials. After completing the base construction, I discovered that we were only allowed to have one recruit at a time. It would have been helpful to know this earlier. Nonetheless, curious to see if the new survivor had better gear, I decided to dismiss Nanny and hire George to inspect his inventory. However, it seems Nanny was not happy about this decision, as she was nowhere to be found. So, I was left with good old George. Next, we encountered some individuals in need of help collecting essence. Since we were in the area and also needed essence, I decided to lend them a hand. Our task was to protect the essence extractor from waves of the bound while it extracted as much essence as possible. With four of us survivors defending the site, the bound stood no chance of getting near the machine and were eventually defeated. On day 13, before heading to my destination, I ventured out to check on a Realmic transmuter. These devices worked with minor cards, each having different effects within the immediate realm. So, I played around with a few cards to see what would work to my advantage, and I also managed to upgrade some of my gear, ready to take on my next site of power. Alrighty, so I think I can take this one out. Okay, never mind, gotta fight now. Freaks going on here, mate. Oh, it's you. What's up, man? I was wondering where that was coming from. For now, let's get the card for this. Release this. That worked. Oh. Yeah, nice one, Gams. Nice one. Whoopa. Okay. Oh, my. So. Hey. What's up? Come on! There you go. Nope. There we go! Nice one. Okay, never mind. There's a way to go down. 
Um, yeah, it took me long enough to figure this out. Ooh. Ooh. Going crazy here, buddy. Oh, there they come. Okay, all right, all right. Hold up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. George! You ready? Whoa, I'm not ready for this. It's time to go, man. It's time to go! Hey, there we go. George! Oh, that's when I can hit him. Wait, yo! Wait, 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 wait. There we go, here we go. Here's our chance. What? You did it, George! You did it! Brilliant! Oh, bad. That was crazy. Okay, so we have to upgrade all our weapons. The next day, using the crude portal at base, I set my sights on the next realm, the Astrolab Forest Realm. Upon arrival, we were greeted by a pack of high-leveled wolves. Not willing to take any chances with these creatures, I decided to engage and eliminate the pack. Then, I visited the Essence Trader to see if he had anything that could aid me on my quest. However, nothing in particular caught my eye. While exploring the realm, George, the remarkable man that he is, inadvertently awakened one of the gigantic beasts. Maybe you melee? Come on, George, you did this. Oh, jeez, that's gonna take forever. Not for me to try just yet. We need weapons, guns, and everything. George, we need to run, George. Are you around, George? George? Following that encounter, I stumbled upon another survivor in need of assistance, which I gladly provided. The task of building a base was quite monumental, requiring a wealth of resources, but we persevered, eventually completing the build and earning a bag of essence. I also took the opportunity to assess the new survivor's gear and decided to bid farewell to George, welcoming our new and improved recruit, Inez. Staying in the Astrolab realm, the following day, I decided to tackle the Fey Tower. Inez and I worked together to clear the room of all the bound that had spawned in, before moving on to collect my reward and face the next phase of the tower's challenges. Unfortunately, at the time, I wasn't entirely sure what was happening. I thought perhaps it was a bug in the game or something. The blue plates on the floor seemed to act as a launch pad for Inez, but not for me. Clearly, I had much to learn about how the game works. For now, this obstacle course was beyond my current skill level, although I did try my best. Later that day, I was able to find another obstacle course that I could actually complete. Day 16 was dedicated to farming essential resources in my home realm, ranging from tin ore to wood for lumber, in order to stock up on a steady supply. At the same time, I prepared refined items to craft all of the available augment stations, ticking off another task from my list of things to do. In an effort to acquire essence and upgrade my gear for more challenging sites of power, I journeyed through different realms for the next few days, tackling numerous fate challenges. One challenge in particular nearly cost me my life, but thanks to Inez's help, I survived and overcame the horde of the bound that threatened us, reclaiming what was rightfully mine. Next, we fought through countless bound creatures to reach an underground portal leading us to another of the Fae's daunting trials. This time, we found ourselves in the Fae Arena, facing a series of formidable challenges that tested our skills and perseverance to the fullest as we tackled each and every obstacle with steadfast determination. Although the trials in the arena were demanding, the ultimate prize at the end made it all worthwhile. Bucket loads of essence and the Fae artifact, Synchronous Lotus. On day 19, with our preparations complete, we stood ready to confront the next site of power. No, it's gonna be a boss fight. Ah, uh, freak me and my stand, bro. Holy smokes! Wait, 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 wait. Jeez, that thing's crazy. Please help me. Ah, oh, frick. There you go. Down! You go, buddy! Off with your head! I don't know where I'm going. We're supposed to go. I know you're supposed to go down. Everything has to go down. Okay, Ines. 
We made it. We got to be really careful about this. Whee! Here we go, buddy. You ready for this? I sure am not. Oh no, this one is different. We soon will run out of ammo. Three, one, two. No, never mind. That don't work. Wee! Shiza. There we go. Two. I'm just going for it because you're almost there. There we go. <laughs> oh, the beauty. The beauty. Ah, give me that. Supposed to get the car, right? On day 20, I made a daring decision. Fully embracing the concept of high risk, high reward, we journeyed to the provisional Swamp Realm to meet with the essence trader who had set up camp there. According to the in-game notes, this trader offered firearms for sale, which would be a valuable addition to our arsenal. Thankfully, the trader's location wasn't far from the portal. Upon reaching the trader's camp, we were confronted by two enormous swamp creatures, formidable opponents with significant durability. Despite our weapon's limited effectiveness against them, we fought valiantly. After a grueling battle, we emerged as victors, having defeated not one, but both creatures. Following this encounter, I promptly visited the Essence Trader, purchased the rifle, along with a few other items, and departed the area without delay. Back at base, I worked on setting up the new workstations purchased from the Essence Trader. I proceeded to collect the necessary resources to refine them back at the workshop, as I needed a whole lot of bits and bobs to craft these new machinery, which I must say, took a lot longer than expected. Alright, it was time to actually work on upgrading my arsenal, now that I had the means to do so. I proceeded to craft the refined mining pick and the refined wood axe, utilizing some of the high quality materials I had collected over time. Next, I sought to experiment with crafting a new item unlocked by the refined sewing machine, but I required specific materials. So, amidst a storm, I ventured out to farm while testing my new weapons against a pack of wolves. I must say, this new gear proved effective in dealing with those pesky animals. Later, with all the refined items ready, I crafted the good old Grand Chestbow Rifle. Oh, what a magnificent piece it was, making me feel truly empowered with a gear level of 48. After a swift upgrade to my new refined wood axe, I ventured into the Astrolabe realm with a simple quest, collect more essence to upgrade the rest of my gear. We proceeded to tackle various points of interest in this new realm, including two occupation sites, where we vanquished the bound that had infested the area. This effort rewarded me with some valuable favors and a small stash of essence. We also assisted another survivor in need by completing another base build for them, earning a chest full of essence as a token of gratitude. Afterward, we embarked on another underground occupation challenge in hopes of finding a portal to the Fey Arena. Although our quest was unsuccessful in this regard, we managed to acquire more essence by releasing the hope echoes found in the cave. Remaining in the Astrolabe forest, I encountered a new challenge. At the time, this puzzle was entirely unfamiliar to me and I had no clue where to begin. So I resorted to the most logical course of action and began hacking away at the structure with my pickaxe to see if anything would happen. I mean, who wouldn't, right? Then I thought, perhaps, coaxing the wisps lingering in the area towards the center might yield results. But alas, this approach proved futile as well. As it turned out, for this new challenge, I had to uncover hidden cliffs scattered throughout the area. Honestly, I had no idea how I managed to discern this, but somehow I did, eventually finding all the hidden cliffs and receiving my reward of essence. Later, we ventured to another underground site, infested with the ever-present horde of bound creatures that needed to be dispatched before we could claim the prize of a bountiful reward of essence. Finally, I stumbled upon one of my favorite challenges, the Fey Arena. Here, one of the tasks involved solving another cliff puzzle. Fortunately, having encountered it previously, I navigated this run much more smoothly. 
completing all the challenges presented in the arena and claiming the pile of essence waiting at the end of the road. After the few days of grinding away for essence, I decided to chill at base for day 25 as I went ahead to upgrade all of my gear to the next level. I mean, by the end of the day, I was looking rather sharp with a gear level of 66. Then we went off to visit our good friend Miss Wilhelmina Sass as it seems that she had a new quest for us. Something about searching for a lawman in the provision of forest realm. Alrighty peeps, it's time to take on the herbarium power of sight. Ooh, freak this dude. Oh, this thing is OP, man. So I got to definitely make more of those. Let's see how far I can shoot. Oh, 500. These guys definitely need to take out from a distance. Um, should we be going up or down in this? Let me check if there's something at the bottom. Because normally we would have to go downwards to face the bus, right? Jeez, this dude. Give me a break, bro. Yee! Here we go. Gotcha. That's what I need to take out first, man. One for the money. Uh. Me and reloads. Oh. <laughs> I'm quite intrigued to see. Oh, we're going to have to fight it here? This is going to be interesting. For sure. The birds and the seeds. Fable ultimates on night. Okay, you can stay there. It's a good thing I got my gun for this. Or my uh, weapon for this. There we go. One more shot. It is down, sir. Come on! Well, thank you very much. Just making sure. Hey yo! Alrighty! To obtain the Herbarium card, I first had to craft the refined mortar station. Then, I meticulously worked through various processes to obtain the items required. Next, I needed to acquire a new type of paper. Coated paper. Once I had all the necessary items prepared, I could finally craft the Herbarium card. With a card in hand, I prepared to venture to the next realm to meet the person of interest, Miss Nelly Bly. Upon reaching the desert realm, the daunting reality of the towering mountain ranges quickly sets in. You see, the person I needed to meet was situated at the very top. I attempted to ascend the first route that seemed feasible, but after several unsuccessful tries, I opted to explore another path. As I searched for a viable route upwards, I unexpectedly encountered a giant-sized scorpion. Feeling out of my comfort zone, I chose to flee and evade the unknown danger. Eventually, I found another potential path. Despite facing obstacles and finding myself stuck between a rock and a hard place, I persisted and forged ahead, determined to reach the summit of the mountain. Finally, overcoming various challenges, we arrived at our destination and met with Miss Nelly Bly. Following our conversation, it became apparent that reaching Nightingale was nearly impossible. However, Miss Bly suggested an alternative destination where all realm walkers could convene and regroup, known as the Watch. To assess this location, we needed to repair a portal by obtaining three special parts, an Aldeotan heart, a Pelasidic etched ingot, and an automaton charm oil. On day 29, I dedicated my efforts to erecting my second portal, diligently gathering all the necessary items required for its construction. Additionally, I crafted the refined climbing pick, purchased from the Herbarium Desert Trader. Furthermore, I upgraded my umbrella to its refined version, also obtained from a blueprint available at the Herbarium Desert. Then, I journeyed to the Astrolabe Desert to meet with Victor Frankenstein, as instructed by Miss Nelly Bly. Fortunately, finding him wasn't as difficult as it was with Miss Bly. However, when I spoke to Victor Frankenstein, he offered me a quest of his own, collecting various samples from the Bound. We didn't have to go too far to get started. I remembered seeing some of the bound at the portal, so we returned to it to confront the bound head on, fighting every single one of them and gathering the remains to fulfill the quest requirements. While we were at the Astrolabe Realm, I decided to tackle a Fade Tower to assist with the quest requirements. We swiftly made our way to the very top of the tower, where we faced another horde of the bound. We battled each and every one of them until we had taken them down and obtained a few more samples that were required. 
Returning to the base the next day with a haul of essence that I had collected previously, I proceeded to upgrade the umbrella and climbing pick at the upgrade station. While that was underway, I decided to rummage through my storage baskets to check for any bound samples that could aid me on my quest. Additionally, I took the opportunity to inspect some of the charms I had accumulated over time. Although I hadn't paid much attention to them before, I suspected that some charms might prove quite useful. For the remainder of the day and into day 32, we journeyed to the Astrolabe Desert in search of the bound to obtain the items needed for Victor's quest. We tackled numerous occupation sites, battling hordes of the bound to acquire the research samples. Amidst our efforts, we encountered another Fey Arena, presenting us with a series of challenges. Rising to the occasion, we faced waves of the bound as part of the arena's trials while continuing our search for the remaining samples. As is customary with arena challenges, there were significant rewards for the victors, which we greatly accepted upon completing the trials. I was struggling to find the last few bound items, so I decided to take on the Gloom Site of Power, thinking that this might offer some insight on what I needed to do. we probably gonna get what we're looking for, hopefully. If these screams don't take us out here. I thought there is a statue or something. Please tell us you have what we need. Yes, you do! But it's a good decision to come here. We just gotta be very careful. Alright, so what do we have here? Ooh. Bound feet. Dark weaver. I think that's what we need. Mm, no. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We need that, uh, would you call it more gem from you? Sorry. We have weapons. Oh, beautiful. Oh, this is new. Come on, come on. Reload, buddy. Re freaking load. Holy smokes. You're strong, mate. Nope. Don't want to stay for that. Intermediate bound slayer. Hey, that's the lumber we need. It's good. Fabled auto matan. The freak. Didn't expect that to come. Is that a deal? How the? You're into the gettiness. Come on. You killing me here. Keep moving, buddy. Whoa. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just gotta take my time here. Keep moving. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Hey, yo, in it. <laughs> All right, all right. We got this, we got this, we got this, mates. Come on! Let's go! <laughs> hey. Buddy. Buddy. You're not helping, buddy. Wait. Oh, yeah, we got the lumber. I forgot about that. Beauty. In an effort to find the rest of the items required, I opted to search the provision of Forest Realm. Upon arrival, we visited the Essence Trader to see what was on offer. I did find a new weapon was in store, the Lancaster Pistol, which I had to get. From there, I went on to take the Fey Tower. At first, it seemed that the bound that spawned in wasn't what we were looking for. However, reaching the top of the Fey Tower, we had a breakthrough. A bruiser spawned in along with the normal bound creatures. Defeating this horde gave me the item I required, leaving only to obtain the hollow metal ingot, which apparently was acquired by taking down a bound assassin. Now that info could be found in the journal provided. On day 35, I decided to stay at base 
to prepare items for the Lancaster. Additionally, I went ahead and farmed some resources to craft a refined tanning station. Back at my little workshop, while rounding up the items to complete the tanning station, I realized I needed more ingots. So, I had to go out to gather all the ore that I could find. Upon returning to the base, I proceeded to refine the items required to craft the revolver, as well as cook up some ammo and upgrade it at the upgrade station. With a bit of daylight left, I decided to venture out looking for targets to practice on. Quite unfortunate for the hogs as they were the first creatures I laid my eyes on. Day 36 began with an unexpected visit from our old acquaintance, Puck. He rambled about something peculiar regarding food, but I paid little attention to his words. What truly piqued my interest was obtaining the hollow metal ingots, and I had an idea of where to find them, at the hunt site of power. There, I took a chance, engaging in a few skirmishes to test my luck. To my surprise, I encountered the bound assassin. After skillfully dispatching it, along with the other bounds, I claimed the prize I sought after, two pieces of hollow metal ingots. With the bound research samples in hand, I returned to Victor in the Astrolabe Desert. After presenting him with the samples, he unsurprisingly tasked me with yet another quest, this time to obtain samples from the Automaton Rook. So, there was no need to tell me twice. I was off hunting rooks in the desert realm. Fortunately, we were in the right place to encounter these automatons, as they were scattered everywhere. Within a matter of a few minutes, I managed to take down several rooks and eventually acquire the parts we needed. Once the quest was completed, I returned to Victor Frankenstein with the samples. In return, he divulged information on acquiring oil for the Bishop Automaton. It seemed I would need to trade ritual seed nurseries for the oil. The next day, I proceeded to prepare items to construct another crude portal. You see, in order to craft the offering for the bishop, chamomile seeds were required and I had a hunch about where we could acquire some. That, my friends, was at the swamp realm. However, upon arriving at the swamp and searching for what felt like an eternity to find any sign of this flower, I began to doubt myself and actually started to think that there was no chamomile in this realm. Nevertheless, I found myself running low on meat. I decided not to waste my time. I took down some of the nearby wildlife, skinning them for their meat. Yet, the thoughts of how to obtain this elusive seed consumed my mind. I pondered it for quite a while until I remembered something about a glossary. As it turned out, my memory served me well, and the seed could indeed be found in the forest realm as well. I then returned to the swamp in search of seed. My exploration took me far and wide throughout the swamp, yet there were no chamomile in sight. However, during my search, I confronted one of my worst fears, the harpy creatures. It posed a significant threat, shooting balls of poisonous gas at me. Despite the danger, I managed to evade its attacks and take down not only the harpies, but also the nearby hippos. The quest for chamomile led me to the provision of forest as well. I harvested all the plants I could find, hoping to locate the one I sought after. Afterward, while checking with the trader, I noticed something nearby. I thought, could this be? Could this be the plant I was searching for? I had to find out. However, to harvest this type of plant, I needed a better sickle. So, I swiftly prepared the stations to craft the sickle, only to discover that it still wasn't the plant I was looking for. The day 39 brought about a breakthrough. Without my initial awareness, after hours of searching, I decided to take a break, only to realize that the elusive chamomile plant that I was after was right beside me, ultimately finding it in the herbarium forest realm near a statue. Returning to my home realm, I sifted through my storage baskets for the remaining items needed to craft the offering. Then we set off for the desert realm to locate a bishop. A few minutes into the search, I recollected that I possessed a charm back at base that could aid me in this task. Therefore, I decided to retrieve it. Returning to the desert armed with my special weapon, I encountered Puck once again. It was a welcoming sight. Afterward, I activated the charm, which set out a trail for me to follow. As I followed its guidance throughout the desert, I was led to a fabled beetle. Not quite what I had in mind, but it was interesting, to say the least. You have brought this creature its death. After what felt like days on end, I finally found the automaton bishop. Presenting it with the offering I had on hand, I received the required oil in return. Along
along with a visit from Puck. Following this, I returned to Victor to analyze the ore obtained from the automaton bishop, which provided me with information about the other items needed for Miss Bly. Once I had finished with Victor's request, I went to speak with Nelly Bly in the Herbarium Desert and delivered the oil I had collected. However, with much still to do, I couldn't linger and set off to acquire the remaining items on the list. To progress to my next challenge, I needed to upgrade my gear. The most reliable method I knew was to visit the Gloom Desert Realm and locate its trader. Reaching the trader, I proceeded to purchase a new weapon from the list of available items, the Axe Pick, along with the refined upgrade station. Returning to the base, I began preparing the items necessary to craft the new upgrade station, and while doing so, I crafted the Axe Pick and enhanced it at the refined upgrade station. I required more essence to upgrade the rest of my gear to tier 2 status, prompting a journey to the Herbarium Desert for farming. We confronted hordes of the Bound to secure the essential essence loot and completed the Fade Tower to unlock additional points of interest on the map for further essence farming. Following that, I engaged in another Fey Arena challenge. This time, it was focused on puzzles. Despite the challenges, I managed to overcome them with ease, reaping the rewards at the end, a bountiful haul of valuable loot. Continuing our efforts, we diligently farmed more essence by tackling additional points of interest and defeating more of the bound creatures. I returned to base to upgrade most of my gear with the essence collected. After it, I prepared a few things before heading off to tackle the hunt side of power. Righty, so I think we're well prepared to take on this side of power. It's going to be dangerous, I do know. Let's just go for it. Inez, are you ready? Cause I'm not. I hope you got my back. Oh yes, let me take a. Oi. Oh, is what the freak? Okay, at least you gave us a way down. Hold up. Hold up. Hey, did not mess with Ines. She's packing. Oh. Come on, I just praised you, Ines. There it is. Yeah. All right, buddy. Oh, 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 oh. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared it is. You can't help me. Bishop. Ooh -wee. I know I can hit you there. Then is you gotta help me out, you man. I see you. Come on, buddy. Come on. Just a couple more and you're out. Oh my goodness! Come on, Tiger! Get ready soon! On day 45, I ventured into the Hunt Desert Realm in pursuit of the Sun Giant. My plan was to rely on brute strength to defeat this formidable foe and acquire the next item. However, while adjusting the portal settings, I inadvertently left it on the easy difficulty, resulting in the hunt being level 40 instead of the intended level 70. Despite this setback, I was determined not to waste the card and resources, so I proceeded to confront the Sun Giant. Holy smokes, what the freak was that? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, what the freak? Oh, okay. It's a good thing I went out of that area. There you go. Oh, I'm so sorry, buddy. This thing gets... I returned to the base to work on a new piece of clothing that I had purchased in the Hunt Desert. I then proceeded to upgrade it at the upgrade station, but I required more essence to advance it to the next tier. Since I was low on the essence at the time, I decided to store it in one of my storage baskets. Afterward, it was time to pursue the Elder Yoten in the Hunt Forest Realm. Arriving at the Hunt Forest Realm, I sought out the first Yoten I could find. Once I located the beast, I readied my weapons and confronted it head on. Utilizing my best weapons and ammunition, I targeted its weak spot to take it down as quickly as possible. Although this battle was far from easy, we eventually managed to defeat the beast and claim its heart, only to discover that it was the wrong 
Eoten. Anyways, not far from the Holt Eoten, I located the one we needed to defeat, the Elder Variant. Despite depleting my best ammunition, I pressed on. This battle proved to be much tougher than the Holt encounter and lasted considerably longer. However, with a combination of firearms and my surprisingly effective axe against this creature, we put up a valiant fight and ultimately emerged victorious, claiming the reward, the Elder Eoten Heart. It was finally time to return to Miss Nelly Bly to find out what was behind the portal gate. After presenting the required items, I gained access to the underground portal, which took me to the final destination, the Watchtower. Here, I made my way to Alan Quartermain to discuss the situation we were in and tasked me with another quest, which was to defeat an apex creature. Once I was done speaking to Alan Quartermain, I decided to explore the rest of the tower, chatting with the other members in the vicinity and also seeing what the traders had to offer. Preparing for the final showdown required extensive preparation, starting with farming essence in the Hunt Forest realm by engaging the Bound Horde numerous times and exploring various points of interest within the realm. We also ventured into another Fey Arena, a recurring activity that proved to be the most effective method for gathering essence. This time, the arena was teeming with different Fable creatures. While I typically don't get rattled by spiders, these particular creatures sent shivers down my spine. Day 50 arrived, and armed with all the essence I had collected, it was time to head to the watch once more. You see, I noticed that one of the traders had an ascended antiquarian card in stock, and I believed this would be really helpful in acquiring better gear, so I purchased it along with a few new workstations. While at the tower, I decided to take a second look at what the other traders had to offer just in case I had overlooked something that could be of help. Not knowing how to progress further, I decided to take a chance and headed off to the vault at the watchtower. Fortunately, it was one of those Fey Arena type challenges, probably one of the easier ones too. After a close encounter with the creatures in this part of the arena, I somehow managed to defeat them and complete the puzzle that was set out. Acquiring a small amount of tier 3 essence, which was exactly what I needed. Returning to the watchtower, I sought out the trader named Adeline and purchased the excellent Enchanter's Focus. With this workstation, I would be able to craft the Ascended Realm card. It dawned on me that crafting the Enchanter's Focus and gathering the necessary components for the card would be quite the task. To be honest, I wasn't exactly in the mood to puzzle it all out, so I decided to shift my focus to sprucing up my base over the next few days. I had a rough idea of what I wanted it to look like, but bringing that vision to life was a bit overwhelming. Taking inspiration from the various bases I'd helped across different realms, I dove into the project. Needless to say, it involved a whole lot of gathering resources along the way. Once everything was finished, I stood back and admired my handiwork. A two-story stone base with some cool wooden accents. It turned out even better than I had expected. On day 55, I realized I needed more tier 3 essence to acquire additional workstations, and the only way I knew how to get it was to tackle the vaults again, so I went back in. Unfortunately, this time around, a horde of the bound creatures spawned in, and let me tell you, they were hitting hard. I barely stood a chance as they knocked me out cold with just a couple of hits. But giving up wasn't in my nature, so I pushed through and gradually took them out one by one. After dealing with the horde, I faced a puzzle, which I eventually solved, earning enough tier 3 essence to purchase two crafting stations. Returning to the trader at the watch, I obtained the excellent masonry bench and the excellent mortar station. Before I began preparing the crafting stations to obtain the ascended realm card, I opted to give the vault one more try, as I needed one additional station. Fortunately, luck was on our side this time, as we encountered one of the easiest puzzles and only had to deal with a single enemy. After solving the puzzle, I claimed my prize of the tier 3 essence. Back at the trader in the watchtower, I obtained the final piece, the weaving loom. For the next few days, 
I dedicated my efforts to crafting all of the workstations that I had purchased. It was quite an extensive task, as each station required a significant amount of resources, some of which I had no idea how to obtain. This process took much longer than expected due to the need to travel to different realms in search of the required materials. From the scorching heat of the desert to the murky swamps, I scoured each realm to gather the necessary items. Additionally, I took on the Fate Tower in the Gloom Realm to unlock the map's points of interest, all the while navigating a challenging puzzle. Despite the difficulty, I managed to successfully complete the puzzle and unlock the points of interest. Finally, after much searching, I stumbled upon what I had been seeking, iron ore. This discovery was crucial as it was a key ingredient needed to advance our operations at the base. On day 61, I returned to the watchtower to see if I could purchase some of the items I needed to craft the workstations. Back at base, while trying to organize everything, it became apparent that in order to craft the steel blade, I needed more iron ingots. Oh yeah, that meant another trip to the swamp realm. I then decided to tackle another fate tower in hopes of finding the underground tunnel. To my disappointment, there was no iron ore to be found in the cave. However, not far from the underground portal, I stumbled upon a mother load of iron ore deposits. It was just crazy. And of course, we harvested as much as we could carry and obtained a decent haul from that location. This was quite a hectic time for me, as I found myself running out of coal, essential for continuing my crafting endeavors. So, I embarked on a quest to acquire some more. We journeyed to another desert realm and tackled yet another fate tower, hoping it would guide me to a place where I knew coal deposits could be found. Sure enough, it led us to an underground tunnel where I was able to obtain the coal I needed. While it wasn't a vast amount, I hoped it would suffice to keep my crafting efforts going. Finally, on day 63, I managed to craft all or most of the workstations that were required. After that ordeal, I felt the need for a bit of a break. So, that's what we did for the rest of the day. However, in all honesty, I found myself stuck once more. You see, I needed a way to obtain powdered gems. Despite checking all the stations multiple times, I couldn't find a recipe for powdered gems anywhere. Just wait! Oh, guess what? While rummaging through my storage baskets, I stumbled upon powdered gems. It seemed I must have picked them up somewhere and completely forgot about it. That's when I decided to prepare for crafting the Ascended Realm card. I thought I had everything I needed, or so I believed. For some reason, when I attempted to use the hammer I had, it didn't work as expected. I was perplexed, wondering why this darn thing wouldn't cooperate. After spending hours contemplating the issue, and just as I was about to give up, I had one more idea. I crafted a simple maul, and to my surprise, it did the trick. With the maul in hand, I successfully crafted the Ascended Realm card. Let's go! It was finally the hour to venture into the Ascended Realm. Although I opted to keep the difficulty uneasy to focus on farming essence, my first task was to locate one of the essence traders in the realm who would have the next Ascended card. This proved to be quite tricky as there were three traders on the map and I had no clue which one held the card I needed. Fortunately, the second trader wasn't too far from the first and he had exactly what I was looking for, the Astrolabe Ascended card. With the card secured, I proceeded to farm the essence I required, battling hordes of the bound, and as usual, tackling the Fate Tower to unlock points of interest. Along the way, I engaged in another Fey Arena, which presented two puzzles and a few bound adversaries to overcome. After completing the arena, I claimed my prize, a bountiful bag of Tier 3 Essence. With a bit of Tier 3 Essence in hand, I decided to visit the Watchtower to make some purchases. From Matty, I acquired some truly impressive weapons, along with the excellent upgrade bench and a Lee Metford rifle. Additionally, I obtained a new set of armor, for the added protection. After completing the last crafting session to acquire the workstations, I wasn't eager to repeat that process. 
Instead, they decided to focus on something slower paced, farming. However, before I could begin, I needed to gather some lumber. This involved gathering logs and then waiting for the saw table to refine them into usable lumber. Once I had the necessary materials, I crafted some crop plots. I also planted some seeds to test things out and set up a rain barrel to see how it worked. As it turned out, I also needed a way to water my crops. Although I tried crafting bottles after discovering a method to do so, which didn't really work out. Unfortunately, I then realized that my only options were to wait for the rain or to craft a watering can. Oh boy, the time had finally come for me to tackle the next set of crafting stations. To be honest, it wasn't something I was looking forward to. Nonetheless, I proceeded to prepare another crude portal, as I didn't want to close any of the others. Then it was time to gather the necessary resources. At the same time, I worked on refining those resources into items required by the workstations. Then, my friends, we ventured off to the Astrolabe Swamp to farm zinc. Afterward, we stepped over to the Herbarium Desert to gather as much copper ore as possible. While waiting for the forge to refine the ores, I traveled to the Watchtower to purchase some items that were in stock with the traders. There, I managed to obtain the mechanical gears, a motor part, and the metal tip. Back at base, with everything required in hand, I finally completed the last set of workstations, or at least, I sure hoped that I did. To delve deeper into the intricacies of farming, another trip to the watchtower was in order, this time to purchase the Dauntless watering can. Upon my return, I diligently rounded up the necessary materials for crafting the can. However, realizing that more ingots were needed, I made a quick trip back to the watchtower to obtain some, as I wasn't particularly inclined to mine ore at the moment. After acquiring all the necessary materials, I crafted the Dauntless watering can and eagerly put it to use. Patiently I tended to my crop plots. Observing the calm rhythm of nature, I patiently awaited results of my labor, watching the beautiful sunrise in the horizon. Meh! Seeing the level of the Dauntless watering can, crafted with just the basic resources, I was eager to see what level I could achieve with a Dauntless weapon. So, I scavenged through all of my storage bags to find any good materials that I could use in the making of my new weapon. Then, I worked through a multitude of workstations to refine these items. Finally, I was able to craft this majestic piece of weapon. And of course, I had to upgrade it, with its level boosted to 211 and an attack power exceeding 1000. This weapon was deadly and ready to tear things apart. I dedicated the next two days to farming resources in the Easy Ascended Realm, intending to craft my next set of armor from high-tier materials rather than the basic ones. We scoured the land in search of creatures that would provide high-tier height, and I stumbled upon some plants yielding high-tier fiber as well. Then, a sudden idea struck me. The merchants at the watchtower might have what I needed. Sure enough, I found the fabric I required, and it seemed to be of high quality as well. After returning to base, I began refining the resources I had collected into usable items and proceeded to craft the armor of my choice. While I would have preferred a better set, I encountered a challenge. I couldn't find a way to craft buckles in this early preview version. Despite hours of searching for a recipe, none could be found. Perhaps it was one of those items that needed to be discovered in the world. Anyways, I completed the crafting process and took my armor to the upgrade station to enhance its capabilities. In the end, I possessed a sleek and formidable set of gear, increasing my gear level to 187. Well, considering I had used up most of my essence, I had to restock them. So, for the next few days, Inez and I hopped to different realms, taking on the hordes of the band to unlock the coveted prize, Glorious Essence. We traveled to some of the realms that I had missed out on for the essence, tackling different types of puzzles and facing all sorts of enemies. Continuing the essence grind, we traveled to more realms while confronting the challenges that lay ahead. So, taking a little break from the essence grind, I decided to go ahead with crafting the new rifle. As before, I went around the base scavenging for the best resources I could find and refined them at the various workstations. Once all the items were ready, I assembled them at the workbench and created this beautiful piece of art, the Lee Metford rifle. From there, I took it over to the upgrade station to enhance its performance and then went out for a target practice session, taking down some hogs that were chilling in the area. 
Now that I was done with the tier 1 essence grind, it was time to move on to the tier 2 essence. Over the next few days, we ventured into different realms to farm tier 2 essence. As we battled more hordes of enemies, overcoming various puzzle challenges laid out for us, and ultimately amassed a super haul of tier 2 essences. It was off to the new realm of the Ascendant Astrolabe Desert. Here, I wanted to see if I could gather any good resources to craft better armor, as I felt my current armor could use some improvement. I then continued my search for one of the essence traders, who would allow me to purchase the next realm card, which led to the Provisioner Realm. From there, we sped off to the Fey Tower to unlock the points of interest and began farming Tier 3 Essence. Yes, we took on more of the bounds and various challenges this realm had to offer. Okay, so you might have guessed or had an idea of what I was going to do next, huh? Well, seeing as I was only getting a small amount of Tier 3 Essence, I knew that farming this resource was going to be a lengthy task. However, for the next few days, I took on the challenge of venturing into different realms to acquire this valuable resource and face the obstacles that lay ahead. We battled numerous hordes of the bound, hoping that this would be the last time to do so. And well, you couldn't leave out the puzzles. I guess the Fae loved messing around with people because these things were everywhere. At the same time, I also sought after some high tier materials that I might be able to use for better gear. On day 91, I visited the Watchtower to explore potential purchases that might enhance my crafting endeavors. Unfortunately, I found nothing suitable for my needs. Back at my base, I initiated the refining process, utilizing most of the workstations in my workshop to extract usable materials. Once the materials were prepped, I proceeded to craft the armor. However, to my disappointment, the resulting armor's level fell far short of my expectations, proving to be inferior to my current set. Guess I'll have to stick with the one I had. Day 92 was focused on crafting the best Dauntless mining pick with the resources I had on hand. As with many of the other items, I had to refine the materials into different components and assemble them all at a specific workbench. Once everything was done, I obtained the best looking mining pick money could buy. Afterward, I went ahead to upgrade all of the items that I was going to use in the vault and max them out. Well, as far as I could in this early access preview. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. It was time to get my gear with some of the available magic charms. To test my gear's strength for the vault, I ventured into a 100 level realm, the Ascended Provisional Realm. Engaging in a hunting mission, we faced various adversaries to assess my equipment's durability. While my gear held up decently, the level 100 enemies posed a significant challenge. Additionally, I made a visit to the Essence Trader, known for stocking ammunition. Understanding the importance of announced firepower, I acquired a fire ammo blueprint from their inventory, an essential item for the upcoming challenge. With the fire ammo blueprint in hand, my attention turned to preparation. Over the next few days, I dedicated myself to resource gathering, scouring for precious metals, rubies, and everything in between required for crafting the ammo. Returning to base, I meticulously refined the gathered items, transforming them into the necessary components for crafting the fire ammo. Additionally, I took the opportunity to craft some regular rifle ammo as well. While pondering improvements for my gear, a sudden realization struck me. Charms and infusions. It occurred to me that I had overlooked this aspect entirely. Well, on day 96, I dedicated my efforts to crafting charms and infusions for my gear. It turned out to be a brilliant idea to accumulate all those essences, as they proved invaluable in creating these magical enhancements. On day 97, I spent my time in the antiquarian desert realm, aiming to gather meat and perhaps find some salt to add flavor to my meals. Despite my efforts, salt proved elusive, but I did collect a decent amount of meat by dealing with the locusts and bugs. Once back at my workshop, I focused on cooking up a storm, trying out new recipes with the ingredients I had on hand. I had always held a curiosity about what would happen if one were to provoke the magical creature residing in our home realm, so I decided to test it out. To my surprise, the creature simply fled and appeared to be immune to all of my normal attacks. Quite intriguing, indeed. Moving on, 
there was another aspect of the realm that I had yet to explore, fishing. I quickly cooked up a simple fishing rod and made my way to a nearby pond. Despite my initial uncertainty, I found the process surprisingly straightforward and managed to catch a few fish as well. Upon realizing the nutritional value of fish exceeded that of raw meat, I spent the afternoon honing my fishing skills and accumulating a stockpile of fish for my upcoming final challenge. Final preparations were underway as I readied everything and cooked up some fish. After it, I relaxed and attempted to focus my mind for the final challenge that was ahead, the vault. Alrighty, so we're going to take this on. We got the uh, Bastille of Inside first. Um, I'm quickly going to put this back up again. There we go. Bastille of Inside. I think we need to find gloves. Am I not mistaken? Not entirely sure about that, but... Uh, couple of the wild creatures we need to take out here like this bear not wanting to have you around here come here buddy stop shaking your legs <laughs> i know it's scary but uh you gotta face it head on man i'm here mate oh there we go we got one it is you don't want to be fighting that Oh, neither do I want to be fighting that head on. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I'm coming for you. There you go. We, you, my dude. I gotta get out of here. There's two of them. I gotta get out of here. Are you coming this way? So I can take you out, buddy. Woo! Where the freak you go? Where does the dude go? Please don't uh, <laughs> jump me from somewhere. Come on. Go home to mommy. Shush. <laughs> Beautiful. It is. You gotta stay behind me. This dude is gonna cause so much damage if he gets... How the freak did I miss that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Wait, 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 wait. Go to sleep. <laughs> Jeez. Alrighty. We uh, finally made it to the end of the road. I uh, think this is going to be the boss fight. This is the end of the road. So, I think that is it right here. Let me just check about what that is. Yep, there's Jenna. So, Jenna, would you please wake up? Because, uh, it's been a while, man. Uh, it took us a very long time to get to you. What's up? Let's go. Hey, buddy. Guess what? Peekaboo. Frick, I can't get that. 2K. I'm not getting good shots here, Cabs. What I do need to do is just keep moving. Because we got these whips on our tail. Uh, whips. Well, whips. Whips. Cam. We got whips on our tail. Ooh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oof. Missed that one, son. Way. Ah, Cam's. Hey. Yo, yo, yo. Jeez. Oi! Oh my soul! There you go. Oh freak! I thought I could get a nice shot. Ooh! Ooh! 12k! If I get this right, 12 freaking k, bro. Wee! Wait! 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 Those things are painful, bro. I went so close, yet I still missed. <laughs> ah! Cubs! What is going on? Oh, there we go. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta move. Gotta move. He's doing his uh, stand-up thingy. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta move. Gotta move. Gotta move. Oh, my soul. What are we going to do? Almost halfway there, though. That's his heart, right? Yeah, these are the hearts I needed to collect. In his doing there, you crazy woman. Come this way! 
behind me. I will protect you. Oh, too close, Cams. Too close. We got to go. It's a good thing I got the fire ammo. Ah, I completely missed. Kayon! <laughs> Alright, let's get out of there. That was too close, Kampet. Kinda. Come on. Oof. Those webs are eating me alive there. The freaks! Alright, 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 alright. Alright, all right. okay, okay, okay. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm <laughs> I'm a protector. Ooh. These wisps. Seems like it. Sorry, mates. Oh. Wee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mamma mia, what is going on here? Ooh. Hey, that's supposed to hit. Oh, come on. What? Okay, I'm just gonna aim for his body then. Oh, that should have been a sweet shot right there, bro. Oh! I'm so sorry, Ines. Coming, coming. Got you, man. One, two. Going in for the kill. There we go. Freaking Tina.